So in this video, I'm going to show you two things to help you with extrusion problems. First, I'll walk you through the process of setting up your firmware in Clipper to properly extrude for your particular printer. Secondly, I will show you how to check your flow rate and the extrusion multiplier setting in your slicer. So under and over extrusion with FDM 3D printers is actually quite common. And the main reason why we want to calibrate our extrusion is to make sure that the right amount of filament is being pushed through the nozzle. Now, in order to do this, you're going to need a few things. First, you're gonna need a marker or a pen. Secondly, you're, not, you're gonna need a caliper or a ruler. Third, you're gonna need filament in your printer. And finally, you're going to need a way to connect your computer to the printer to send a bit of G-code. In my case, I'm going to be using the web-based mainsail interface. So in Clipper, what we need to calculate is the extruder's rotation distance, which is the distance that filament travels for one full rotation of the stepper motor. What we want to get is an exact measurement. So if we tell the printer to extrude 50 millimeters of filament, we want 50 millimeters of filament to travel through the extruder. If 60 millimeters of filament travels through the extruder, then we are over extruding. If 40 millimeters of filament travels through the extruder, then we are under extruding. So let's open up mainsail and go through the process. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find out what the current rotation distance is. We can find this in the printer configuration file under extruder. Once you get this number, jot it down as it'll be needed later. At this point, heat up the extruder to the temperature that you typically print at. I usually print at 205 to 210 degrees, so I'll just set the extruder to 205 degrees. Then, from the point where the filament enters the extruder, measure 70 millimeters and put a mark on the filament. At this point, Enter the following command into your mainsail or fluid console, G1, E50, F50. This will start extruding filament from the nozzle. The hope, of course, is that the extruder will extrude exactly 50 millimeters. When doing this extrusion step, make sure not to use the extrude option in your mainsail or fluid interface. Doing the extrusion this way is not going to work as it's way too fast and it will skew the final results as it can cause high pressure in the extruder. For this test, you want the extrusion to be slow and steady. When done, measure the distance to the mark on the filament. In my case, the distance is 23 millimeters. This means that I've extruded 47 millimeters of filament so in my case, I'm under extruding. So at this point, I need to calculate the correct rotation distance. So this is the equation that needs to be used. First, you get your previous rotation distance. In my case, it was 33.5. Multiply that by the actual extrude distance. In my case, it was 47 millimeters. Divide that by the requested extrude distance, which is 50 millimeters. The result is your new rotation distance, which in my case is 31.49. Once you've got the new number, all you need to do is change the rotation distance under extruder in the printer configuration file. Just round it off to the second decimal point. Once you make the change, click on save and restart. And now, your extrusion should be correct. I've already checked mine again, and it is correct. So check yours, and if it's correct, you're basically done. Another important thing to calibrate in order to make sure that you get the absolutely ideal extrusion, or as close to it as possible, is the extrusion multiplier. 
Whereas the rotation distance is about tuning your printer, the extrusion multiplier tuning is more about tuning the slicer for the particular flow of the filament that you're using. Given that filaments are not identical, you may find that some filaments over or under extrude. The extrusion multiplier essentially allows you to adjust the flow to compensate a little bit for this possibility. So what this means is that you should check the extrusion multiplier every time you change a filament. While there is a good chance that you won't have to modify the default value in your slicer, in Prusa Slicer, the default is 1, which is basically 100%. With some filaments, you might find that you need to do a bit of tweaking to get it just right. So in order to check the extrusion multiplier, you can download and print a quick test. A good option is the one found on printables by Hume Beam. I will put a link in the description below. So download the model that corresponds to your nozzle width. In my case, and probably yours, it's a 0.40 millimeter nozzle. Print out the cube and make sure you've set your extrusion width to the width of your nozzle. In Prusa Slicer, you'll do this under the Print Settings tab and then Extrusion Width. You also need to slow down your printer. I recommend setting a speed of 50 millimeters per second for all the options in the speed setting in Prusa Slicer. Once you've done this, print the model and measure the thickness of all four walls with a caliper and note the width of each of the sides. Hopefully they'll all be 0 0.80 millimeters, in which case you won't have to do anything. However, if you get variable measurements for the widths, it means that you'll have to modify the extrusion multiplier number in the slicer. The calculation for your new extrusion multiplier is very simple. So let's say that you have the following values for your four walls, 0 0.81, 0 0.82, 0 0.83, and 0 0.82. The formula you'll use to calculate your flow rate is the following. You'll start by calculating the sum of the numbers in the parentheses. So 0 0.81 plus 0 0.82 plus 0 0.83 plus 0 0.82, which is equal to 3.29. Divide the sum by 4 to find the average, which is equal to 0 0.82. Now divide 0 0.80 by the average calculated in the previous step. So 0 0.80 divided by 0 0.82, which is equal to 0.9756. So in this particular case, the extrusion multiplier is 0 0.97. Go to the slicer and change the value to 0 0.97. Generally, the values here should be anywhere between 0 0.9 to 1.1. Okay, so once you've done this, you should be good to go. Your extrusion and flow rate should be perfect and you should see an improvement in your prints. And that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Also, feel free to leave your thoughts, questions, or suggestions in the comments below. Your feedback is important to me. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.